course the question on people's minds and the questions we get are kind of what did you pay for this or what what sort of what was your budget for all this right providing it's not too windy i might try and record this video which i've had on my mind for a while and it's all about how we found the farm been meaning to kind of share this because a lot of people have asked how we found the property and the other properties we tried to buy last year um, and there's a series of tips that may be public knowledge and just common sense or may not be so I thought I'd talk them through here anyway so ways to find properties that you know not your average semi-detached house on a, in a cul-de-sac um, obviously you've got your normal contenders your right move your on the market and all those and that's fine and majority of properties end up there whether they're commercial or farms or land it makes sense for agents to put them on there however they're not always so it is worth um, looking elsewhere and there's a few websites which are more specifically aimed at self-builders plots or, or farms and estates um, there's plot finder and a few other ones which are a lot of those tend to be smallish plots which have planning permission or barn conversions with planning uh, so there's a premium there obviously for us one of the main priorities the main criteria was to find something with an amount of land now for us the sweet spot was five to ten acres uh, we also wanted to find something which wasn't just a five to ten acre field it was a bit of variety anyway we ended up um, finding this place slightly different because it was marketed as a commercial property being that it was a farm most of those well because there wasn't a house involved uh, the house was split from the farm therefore it was more of a commercial purchase so it was on right move but it was on a commercial section of right move which ordinarily you wouldn't find so perhaps it's worth having a look there if you are looking for a project which might fall under that category and secondly, there's another great website which is called UK Land, and, UK Land and Farms. And for the last 18 months to two years, that's where we've been trawling. Far less properties than Right Move, obviously, because they're more specific. But anything from a small holding to a, well, thousands of acres of estate and castles up in Scotland, it, it's kind of more rural and it's more uh, farm slash small small holdings that sort of thing so providing you're uh, in that criteria then have a look there other things you can do well find the right estate agent in the area you're looking for estate agents vary and not all of them like specialize in farming or rural or plots or development so find well keep keep an eye out for what estate agents are dealing with those properties for us um, we moved out of the area but we knew around this area um, that there were a couple of estate agents or land agents who dealt with all the rural sales and most farms that came up for sale the owners went to them and a lot of times it's auction or informal tender and you just have to kind of uh, keep keep an eye out for those agents give them your requirements give them your name you can go old school you know you don't have to just have alerts set up on right move talk to agents and they'll keep you informed what else um obviously there's there's the the local chat you know talking to people what's going to come up for sale but it's hard in this in this sort of market i guess most people want to get the most exposure possible so rather than selling direct they're going to want to market it obviously location location to a certain extent if you want that plot so you can build in the village that you've always lived in you're going to have to wait longer than if you can look further afield for us we found three properties last year all three we attempted to buy one we lost out at auction and two we missed out on the sealed bids and all of that was within i don't know 10 miles so it was within our area not massive disruption to our lives but that we just realized that unless something was going to change we'd never get that that property or that land 
And for us, yeah, that one thing to change was the location. So we ended up broadening our search area. And then that's when you, you see something. And if it is the right place and it's enough of a pull, then you can justify the move. And hopefully it's the right time in family life and things like that, that you can make it work. Um, it's not going to be easy for us. We're still we're starting from scratch up here. Um, but hopefully in the long run, it's going to be worth it. Obviously, finances is one of the other issues and the whole of the last well the last two years it's going to be been so competitive that properties like this all the properties we've been looking at are all cash buyers only pretty much uh, or so they say so the the sort of the plots the anything with development potential even farms like this and most well most of the time we were up against cash buyers so we had to match that uh, obviously auction as well with the auctions it is possible to finance that uh, the first place we missed out on that big house down in somerset that was you had to pay up within seven days of the auction so in reality finance probably wasn't an option you it was gonna have to be a cash purchase so we had to do all the arrangements beforehand ready to just pull the trigger if we did win which was pretty stressful and you're calling on a lot of favors or, or um, arranging a lot of finance and things like that on the uncertainty that you might not get it anyway. So anyway, and likewise, when we came to this property, it was informal tender, essentially sealed bids, which is just a pain, but that, that is the nature of a lot of agricultural sales, supposedly anyway. And uh, we knew that we were needing to put ourselves in the best position. We hadn't sold the house. We hadn't even put the house on the market, although it was getting ready to go on the market. And um, so we had to once again become cash buyers. There's obviously options there as well, whether it's a bridging loan or your own finances or um, borrowing, you know, making it, having a personal loan with um, family members, all of those things, none of which is easy and it can all get really messy. Now, in reality, with this property, it took so long because of solicitors and things like that, that we'd actually sold our house. Even though we hadn't put it on the market, we'd sold our house by the time we purchased this. So in reality, if we had done a formal bridging loan, it could have been a matter of two or three weeks. That would have cost an amount of money. You know, the interest, when we were looking at the auction property, I think it was going to cost us about fifteen to £20,000 in interest over six months. And that's a crazy amount of money and no one would wish to spend that. But if it's a difference between you getting that property or not, then that might be the, the, something that you need to decide. And if you are simply just looking at the property price and saying, well, it's X amount plus that 15, 20 grand, would we still buy it? If the answer is yes, then th there's an argument to say, well, it's worth what you want to pay. The messy bit is bridging loans, of course, if you couldn't sell your house, then you end up in a real mess because you're paying all of this interest. Uh, you're either going to have to drop the price on your house or, you know, it, it could get really messy pretty quick. So it is a last resort, but quite often it is the only resort, um, especially if it's things like auction properties, unless you've got, unless you're in that field and you're well used to taking out um, mortgages for that sort of thing. Uh, obviously, you've got your own cash reserves. So for us, it was a combination of all those three, but we wanted to make sure that we were ready. So when we put in that letter and that offer, we were ready to go. Ideally, they were asking for a 20, 28 day completion. It was five months, um, not anything to do with us. It was just sellers, solicitors and things like that. But we had to be ready if that was the case. Equally, going old school and writing a letter is no bad thing. And we have always, every property we've bought, we've or, or try to buy we've always written a letter who we are um how we want to buy the property what we want to do you know you don't have to tell them everything but you you want to just paint a picture especially if they are going to be uh, local still whether they're next door or whether they're moving within the village or something like that you they want to know what you're going to do with their property even though it's not theirs anymore uh so it's just a case of kind of you know, scratching their back and, and saying and reassuring them almost, especially if it's somewhere that they have put a lot of work into or if it's a family heirloom 
or you know a generational home or generational farm in this case so reassuring them that you're not going to you know convert every single building here into um, houses or airbnbs and all that sort of stuff and that you do have a genuine interest in rural life and i think that went down well and both properties we've bought we've had positive feedback to having that letter um <clears throat> our last house we bought from the sisters of the deceased um, seller and they had two developers who wanted to tear it down and put four houses there and then us and they i don't know what the other offers were but they were much more you know in tune with us taking it on and restoring it into a family home again so it is worth that letter might take half an hour it might take a couple of hours because you read it and you wonder and wonder what you should be putting in and what you shouldn't but anyway that's another thing worth looking at but like i said don't always think everything's on right move uh, be prepared to shift your priorities uh, sh uh, open up your possibilities if you are always going to look for a plot think is it possible to look at a barn conversion or if you want to look at a, uh, a self-build don't forget to knock out bungalows on your search criteria because a bungalow with an acre is not an uncommon thing and if there's a bungalow there you're more than likely going to be able to put something else there and a virgin plot between two houses with planning permission is an appealing thing but equally you can be in a much nicer perhaps more remote location if there's already a building there and already a dwelling there then that's uh, something to think about and of course it could be more expensive up front because you've got a house you're buying a house rather than a plot of land but if that means you're going to get a better piece of land uh, and equally far more chance of getting that planning through then that's an option of course in an ideal world you could get planning permission before you move somewhere you could do all those inquiries but come on the real world competition is so high that if you start messing around telling sellers that you're going to try and get outline planning before you buy it or put endless amounts of surveys and searches and everything you can kill your chances and you can say look i know the roof's going to fall in soon i know i know, I know everything's got to be done we're not going to ask for any money off and in some respects surveying can be a not a waste of money but not the best use of money if you know you're going to be tearing the roof off re-insulating the whole house rewiring the whole house doing all that stuff is it worth getting an absolutely nuts and bolts thorough survey done probably not uh, and uh, the likelihood is a lot of those bits that are picked up are needs further investigation needs a specialist to look at you know you're not actually getting the answers you're just getting things flagged up that you probably knew were there already not to to take away from the work that surveyors uh, you know do that's incredibly important especially if it's structural stuff but when it's when you're talking about just a dated property uh, it can yeah it's not always necessary of course the question on people's minds and the questions we get are kind of what did you pay for this or what what sort of what was your budget for all this and the the guide price for the whole farm including all the boy, um, buildings and the lake field was i think 250 255 something like that if it had been nearer our last house it probably would have been half again uh and of course that was a guide price it was we were more than happy to go over that because we knew everyone was going to be going over that anyway uh it wasn't quite double but it was you know getting on it was far more than the guide and that's just been the nature of everything in the last couple of years so i don't know if that's what people were expecting or not but um if you're buying farmland you know typical pasture it might be ten thousand pounds an acre let's say so if you've got 20 acres like here um that, that's immediately a chunk of money that you can equate and then of course all the buildings here if there was planning permission on all these buildings it would have been considerably more we already had a good lean from um previous pre-apps and things like that and discussions we'd had and the reality of where the buildings fall within planning and class queues and things like that so we were on the fence still but fairly um confident that we would be able to get something here 
uh, housewives. So it's a bit more of a gamble, but you know, we wouldn't have got it any other way if it had been in a different location, if it had already had planning permission, if it had already um, been a domestic curtilage rather than just agricultural, all these things, something's got to give or something's got to be, you know, we've got to be an opportunist at some, some point to get what we want. Um, and that's how we got here. In a future video very soon, I promise, we will be sharing more of an overview of the whole farm, where the buildings are, the layout, and our plans for those buildings. We're not sure, 100% sure on all of it yet, but the primary, you know, getting the house and the cabin and things like that um, arranged now, where we want to put those, that's what we need to decide, and that's what we will try and answer in a future video. Any more questions, stick them down below. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.